ಸ್ವಹಂ ತತ್ಸವಿತುರ್ಹರಿಣ್ಯಂ ಭರಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯ ನೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾಂಧಂ Namaste namaste everyone today we are going to speak about um okay the divine incarnations avatars the divine masters including himalayan masters and um, human history i mean just quite social political history so many events i mean re-elections, financial crisis, oh my god, even military conflicts. And can we say that the real reason, purpose, original of all that social processes is really not political but mystical? Okay, just recently I was reading a wonderful book on Sri Aurobindo, great Indian sage who was born in the okay, uh, second half of 19th century and uh, he passed away in 1950. And if you know about Sri Aurobindo, of course you know that he was working not on his personal enlightenment or self-realization but his goal was to transform humankind uh, one of the most important if not the most important point in Sri Aurobindo teaching is that present humankind human beings is the not ultimate level of evolution but because of certain spiritual process whatever we can describe it new divine humankind will be born of course we don't know when exactly and for sure that's not an easy job And Sri Aurobindo, as a spiritual practitioner, as a spiritual master, was working not... Okay, because, let us say, his goal was to achieve some personal enlightenment, self-realization, God-realization, even maybe physical immortality. But Sri Aurobindo was working on transformation of the mankind that was huge task to achieve of course most of the people even spiritual practitioners they never believe into that many people accuse Sri Aurobindo that his job was just his own personal fantasy okay but personally I myself as a Kriya Yoga practitioner and as a Kriya Yoga master I really think, believe and that's my personal intuition and experience that yeah, really Sri Aurobindo was working not on his own personal transformation rather on transformation of humankind and then let us remember the historical events again, first part, first half of the 20th century first world war and then later on second world war okay now many scientists i mean just history science trying to understand what was or, or what were the reasons behind first world war then second world war and it's very important to understand because Okay, any moment we can experience next global conflict, which can be military or can be politically, financially, yeah, any kind of experience. But the problem is that most research work which we have right now about global conflicts, they speak about 
financial and political reasons, sources, okay, motivation, background or for the huge global political social events, including okay, revolutions, including world global military conflicts, okay, some political and financial reasons. Certain super rich people, bankers, global corporations, they wish to dominate world and they start this or that social problem. But um, let us suppose that um, actually that is not the ultimate explanation because even social political part of our reality and history sometimes you know brings us to the point of understanding that you know if money if money and political power is the point then actually we don't need most of the conflicts we experience as a human civilization suppose super rich okay bankers banks global multi you know national corporations the want to dominate okay then most of the wars military conflicts are not necessary you don't need to create suffering you don't need to make people die if you want to be rich even I mean if you have huge amount of money and you you wish to even increase even that you don't need most of the conflict so that's the reason why it is absolutely realistic to suppose that it, there are reasons actually mystical divine and anti-divine cross christ like and anti-christ like forces reasons for most if not all the global events even difficult problematic social financial political events for example Sri Aurobindo Deban, whom we are speaking in this video he was intensively working with the mother Mira Fasa, his helper and co-worker okay Sri Aurobindo was intensively working on global transformation amazing for the most of the people more like materialistically thinking minds it's difficult to imagine that certain Indian yogi staying in his room somewhere in South Indian town of Pondicherry meditating and transforming humankind. Who can trust, who can believe, who can support this idea? Maybe you can, for sure. I am supporting this idea. And she Aurobindo for okay almost 40 years he was staying in Pondicherry South India and he was meditating and writing books and then again meditating then again writing books on spiritual transformation both personal and global and his meditation was able to influence the history of humanity crazy okay and um, well and then according to this approach which I support personally first world war and especially second world war actually happened as the um, you know the evil forces who came they wanted to stop Sri Aurobindo's spiritual 
work and that's the reason why we got such a huge trouble as the second and before first world war you know of course we have um, plenty of explanations why all that military conflicts and social political conflicts may happen sometimes in our history but I think that in invisible struggle struggle on subtle level between the divine forces and the evil forces is serious reason why many things happen including uh, the situation which we have 2020, 2021. I don't want to analyze the situation right now um, in a way like, you know, who's responsible, who's behind this conspiracy okay, stuff. But yeah, it is possible to suppose that certain government, certain secret societies, certain global banks or corporations, they are somehow behind that. But you know, even if we'd like make few steps further, we can see that even banks and governments and um, you know, global corporations, they're just an instruments and real struggle happen even on more fundamental and a more subtle level which is really the, the struggle between forces of light and forces of darkness and there are political forces okay just quite physically existing they are instruments of evil and there are political forces which we can say okay instruments of light and of course very difficult to choose the right side because yeah we have propaganda we have uh, tv news and that trying to force us to think that good is good bad is bad but who knows maybe those forces which we consider as the pretty good and good guys maybe really they are not okay let me complete this video for today of course i invite you to watch my videos on different platforms and internet do not forget to leave your comments and watch many of my videos about like kriya yoga meditation mahatma gurus i mean himalayan masters chakras lucid dreams so many topics god bless all of us see you next time Yo, yo, nach prachodayantam.